Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper, Takedown Media. Our coverage of the sport continues with yet another great Nike hot seat interview. Arizona State is the conference champions of the pack. He joins us now as assistant coach for the Sun Devils, and I'm talking about Lee Pritz. Lee, welcome back. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you, Scott? Good, man. I was so excited to, to read the news, and then I heard from a lot of folks. For the first time in 11 years, Arizona State has brought a conference championship trophy home to Tempe. Talk about the initial feeling that you all had in celebrating uh, this Pac-12 uh, Pac title. Well, you know, I think the biggest thing was the anticipation leading up to it and the amount of people that knew it was a possibility. You know, it, it was going to be a battle all the way through. We knew that, and I think everybody around knew that. But leading up to it, there was so much excitement around the program. And when you look in the stands and you got, you know, our AD and his wife, Ray Anderson and Buffy Anderson are in there. And, and you know, Don Bakke, our sport administrator, is in there. And Scotty Graham, our sport administrator, is there. And then all the fans that came out and our former alumni that came out, it was, it was pretty cool that they were there just in case – it did happen. You know, I think that was cool. And then at 97, their 97 pounder ended up losing. And that's when it was sealed. So there's, you know, one match to go when it got sealed. And I think uh, at that time it was, it, it, it was a cool moment, but it lasted for about three seconds. Cause then our heavyweight, you know, was, was in the finals and he had to wrestle and, and, there wasn't a whole lot of thought about the team at the time when you're thinking about the individual trying to get his title. Which is indeed the challenge for you coaches. It's a, it's a, it's a tug of war, if you will, on emotions and job at hand. Stanford Cardinal was able to post 122 and a half points, coach, and I've done the math. That's a four and a half point margin. Uh, that's tight, tight indeed. The conference looks solid. We saw a great performance, I think, out of CSU Bakersfield, scoring 92 on the board. Oregon State in fourth with 91 and a half, so that's a tight finish. Boise State and Cal Poly came in fifth and sixth. What's your overall takeaway from the conference championships this year? You know, this is my fifth year at this tournament, and I've seen it in the past where there are some guys, maybe when they're outside the national tournament, you know, the, the chance of getting an automatic bid that didn't necessarily give it their best shot. And I saw less of that this tournament. This tournament, I saw a lot of guys wrestling real hard. And, and you know, they kind of looked at Cal Poly, you know, and, and I know they finished sixth, but those guys were battling every second of the tournament. They really did. They competed hard through every match. And I was like, they're going to get good. They're going to get a lot better, and they're going to get better fast with their staff they have and what they're bringing because – you can see where there's a team aspect, and it was great. I like that. And the culture, it's all about changing cultures. And it has changed, I think, at a lot of programs, including Arizona State. Uh, Zeke Jones, uh, who I'm sure you're very proud to call, not just a friend, but uh, a, a, an, a, another coach that really is imparting greatness. Let's talk about this being the 19th all-time conference championship and the 17th in the Pac-10-12. It comes thanks in large part to the performance of at least five guys that started stood up and won championships, individual championships for the Sun Devils. Let's talk about Josh Maruka. Let's start at 149. What can you tell me about his overall performance, not just on the on the season, but surely how it all ended up at the championships? Well, you know, as you go through, and, and we had seven freshmen in there, right? So he's one of them. And he is the one seed, but he goes through and he does his job. Uh Ended up losing a major right at the end in the semis at the, in the last seconds. And then in the finals, same kind of thing. Trying to get, you know, he had the major, and then he's trying to get more back points and ends up losing the major right at the end. And, you know, but he comes off, and no one's really thinking about that a whole lot because, you know, hey, you got a freshman who just won the Pac-12. Well, I'm over in the corral area talking to a few of the guys, and, you know, Nico Villarreal, who – ended up not making the tournament, but had a huge pin in, in the uh, Conti semis against the kid that majored him earlier, you know, oh, a couple weeks ago. And, and uh, so I'm giving him a hug, and, uh, you know, he's kind of licking his wounds a little bit. And I said, hey, I'm real proud of you. 
you know, that pin was huge for the team. It was important. It was huge. And uh, I said two bonus points right there. Huge. And uh, Maruka, fresh off of Pac-12 title as a freshman, goes, oh, coach, I didn't do anything for the team. I lost all the bonus points. So, you know, you look at that, and here's a freshman coming in, and that's his mindset already. You know, and so that's when you know your culture is kind of in the right spot when he's like, you know, and I said, no, 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 you did great. You know, you won the conference. He's like, yeah, but I blew the, I blew the bonus points. So that shows me a lot. I really like where his mind is. And all these young studs out there, you're, you're right. There's a whole lot of freshmen, but the future does look bright indeed for the Sun Devils. Let's talk about Josh Shields, 157-pounder. He had a pretty outstanding event. He did. He came in and... uh Again, some of this is running together, but in his first match, I, I believe he uh, he teched his guy. He did. He tech. He, he got a tech ball, wrestled hard, uh, ended up teching him, and then uh, in the finals again, it was another dominant performance. And uh, you know, he's always he he's so hungry. He gets better every time he steps on the mat. So. I look for big things out of him over the next, you know, four years, three and a half years. Constant improvement is what I've noticed out of Shields. Anthony Valencia, one half of that Valencia um, a package of 65 and 74. You've always known what he's capable of, and he stepped into it and then stepped out with a title. What are your thoughts? He is very driven. Um, it, wrestling's his world. Uh, he, and he came in to this tournament and it's, it's every match, you know, you see some guys and they go into dual meets and maybe they're a little different and, you know, or, or he goes into a pack 12, maybe it's a little bit, there's a little more to it or an NCAA tournament. There's a little more to it or, you know, a junior world team trials or something. There's a, maybe a little more because the important, everything for him is, of utter importance. So yeah, he comes out every match and looks to dominate and he doesn't care who he's wrestling, whether it's the best guy in the country or what's our 78 programs or the number 78 ranked guy in the country. He wants to wrestle the same way and just bring heat. And so that's what he does. He comes out and he gives you everything he has. And sometimes it doesn't go right for him. He comes back in the room and he works on the little areas to fix those problems and continues to move forward. So I'm really proud of the progress he's making. And then, of course, his brother at 74. I, how much do these guys wrestle around with each other? You know, it's it's funny. Shields and Maruka came from the same area. You're in the same high school, same club. And then you have the Valencia guys, who obviously are brothers. And at the beginning of the year, they were all kind of separate. They all worked out with different people. And when we started getting close into that competition time, you saw them start to gravitate back towards each other, back to kind of where, you know, this is when I've had success is when I'm working with these, you know, with this guy, with my partner. And, you know, so, yeah, they, they work out quite a bit now. Uh, every now and then we got to watch them because they like to uh, – they like to play rough. <laughs> you know, I'm not playing rough with either of those, those Valencia boys. I'll tell you what, <laughs> he is something else. And nor would I play rough at all with Tanner Hall. Tanner Hall really came through in the clutch, didn't he? You know, Tanner did. And he's been really consistent all year long in finding ways to get his hands raised. And he, he has progressed. And he works in different areas. And you can see when he's working – on something specific, it immediately goes into his, you know, into his match performance. So what we've got to do with him is get all the areas he's worked and combine them into one. And when we do that, I think you're going to get, you know, a pretty powerful performance out of him at the national tournament. There's a ton of um, humility with this guy, a ton of leadership skills. And it was noted most, uh, most notably for me was when he credited the entire team effort. He said that many times the champions are the ones that get all the publicity. He went on to say that it's important to recognize everybody, especially guys like Jason Peterson and Josh Kramer, who did way more than was expected of them. And without them and their performances, as a team, you guys wouldn't have won. So this team is not just yelling. They're yelling, and they're yelling for each other. 
Well, it is. You, you take a Jason Peterson who, you know, is a 65 pounder, and, and you know, where's he going? You know, he, he he couldn't beat Anthony Valencia, and he couldn't bump up and beat the Heat, and you know, we were, we were struggling a little bit at 84, and he started to come in. We said, hey, you know, you can. He's a big, strong kid. You know, I mean, he's he's only 172 pounds, but, you know, he's a physical and a strong guy, and he can wrestle for days. He said, you you want in? He's like, I do. And he did. He went from the six, you know, the, the six seed to the finals. And it was great. You know, he, he competed hard, and it breaks my heart a little bit that, you know, he, gave, he was losing majority of the match and then retakes the lead and ends up giving it up on a reversal with not a lot of time left. And, uh, it was a little heartbreaking, you know, because because the guy was seconds away from punching his own ticket to the national tournament, and then and then you got a guy like Josh Kramer, who, you know, is a four seed, gets a pigtail, believe he had a tech fall, and then the next match is wrestling the uh, Stanford guy, who I believe at the time was ranked twelfth in the country on the last coaches poll. And, you know, and we lost to him pretty good in the dual meet and comes out and executes a perfect game plan and stays 100. You know, I mean, he was disciplined and followed to a T and, man, got a huge win. I'm t- that was the game changer of the tournament right there. Head-to-head head in the semis, that changed the whole tournament. And, you know, and then he goes on to the finals where he's wrestling a guy that actually tech-followed him from Bakersfield, tech-followed him in the second period, what, two and a half weeks ago? And ends up in a seven-five hard scrap, and and really had an opportunity to win it, and you know, and so yeah, you, you, your heart breaks for those guys a little bit because they all had their opportunities, but then you know at the same time there's that without them there's no team title. It's been said that uh, the devil is in the details. Well, in this case, I think you're. I think I think whoever said it first is right. Valencia remains undefeated. Z remains undefeated, 33-0. and 0. That's a detail. He picks up the most outstanding award, uh, the first since Anthony Robles did it back in 2009. He is part of a Pac-12 championship team. These are all details. How do you refocus him preparing him for the NCAA championships? You've got three weeks. I don't think refocusing is something you have to do. I think it's <laughs> – you know, and, and, and that's what's great about this team is – is you have seven freshmen or, you know, I guess Peterson's a junior, but seven freshmen, two sophomores and a junior. So, you know, it's not a whole lot of veterans on here. Right. And then, so you got these guys that are young and a lot of new experiences and they just keep responding. So I don't know that you necessarily have to refocus them. I think more than anything, you just have to keep reminding them, just keep responding. That's it. Respond. And they are, and they respond beautifully to, whether it's Zeke, you know, messing with their mind and, you know, trying to play with their emotions and get them rattled or, you know, whatever it is, they respond. What was Art Martori's response? Final question. Art Mar- Martori's response after uh, you guys raised that trophy. What was what was his uh, facial expression? You know, I I didn't see it right away, but when he came over, you know, he's – not the most emotional guy. He comes over and shakes a few hands. Hey, good job. Hey, good job. Good job. And you know it's so deep. He, he He's so passionate about this program and, you know, about the sport of wrestling in general. But, you know, he came over, shook everyone's hands, gave everyone a hug, and disappeared. Went Kinda back like he and, does. Went back and renegotiated his water rights. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Our Mark right. Tory, Mark Tory Farms. It's always good to talk to you, Lee. Congratulations on an outstanding performance. Uh, if you're going to win it, I'd rather it be a nice, close battle, a knockdown, drag out battle where you don't know until the very end. It's not always fun to sit around and watch a walk away, but you guys did it and did it with great style. Congratulations on the victory. We're looking forward to seeing you in St. Louis, Missouri, March 16th through the 18th and the NCAAs. I'm expecting a great performance from you guys. Well, I'm expecting us to battle real hard, you know, and uh, and give everything they have like they have all year long. And, you know, we just we appreciate you guys too, Scott. Lee Pritz has been our guest at the Nike Hot Seat today. Over his shoulder is a 
That's a painting, folks. It's not a photograph. That is a painting. And uh, you want to give credit uh, as to who uh, who did the painting for you? Yeah, my best friend in the world. He actually was a high school national ta- champ, uh, two-time JUCO champ, and then wrestled me at Clarion. But uh, Jason Money, that's his wife, Lena Money, and it's an oil painting. It's sweet. It's very sweet. I'm so glad it you does chose amazing that. amazing work. <laughs> you were making it work in your office. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lee Pritz. God bless you. Best to everybody on the squad, Coach Jones and uh, the balance uh, in, the, in the coaching offices at Arizona State. Sun Devils are the Big 12 champs of 2017. God bless. You.